My name is Bella. And right now, I sit in a room at night with the windows blacked out because I'm very afraid of sunlight. It sounds strange, but it's true. There are other peculiarities that drive me crazy. I feel like I'm turning into a monster. And if I were you, I would listen to this story very carefully. It all started a week ago. We had a costume party at school. It is held every year for high school students. On this day, everyone who goes to the ball must show up in real costumes. And the more gruesome your image, the cooler it is. That's why people in the halls of the school start whispering about the ball months in advance. I had my own plans for this prom. I wanted to get to know Vincent. This handsome boy had transferred to our school a couple of months ago, his senior year. Blonde, curly hair, big blue eyes, and captain of the swim team. More than one high school girl wanted to hook up with him. Me too. Gabby got to him first, and they'd been dating for a little over a month, but now they were in a fight. So I decided to take Vance away from her at prom. It wasn't much trouble for me. I'm a pretty girl, and I have no shortage of admirers. One for a movie, one for a walk in the evening, one to do my homework. I'd been changing boyfriends like a glove for a long time. But I wanted to be with Vincent, because he alone did not pay attention to me. And it's terribly angry. It was as if he didn't notice me. I saw in the bleachers and shouted the loudest when the swimming competition was going on. Whose name I was chanting, you can probably guess. For 20 bucks, I got a nerd to give me his school locker, which was right next door to Vincent's. So every morning, I spent a long time hanging around the locker, waiting for the guy to show up but all in vain. And since I'm a stubborn girl, I decided that Vincent wouldn't sneak away from me at the ball. I prepared a luxurious black dress to the floor, embroidered with small shiny stones and the same beautiful eye mask. A princess of the dark. And I couldn't wait to approach Vincent at the ball. He wouldn't recognize me in the mask. And then we would have a nice conversation, and then we would dance, and, of course, we would have a photo shoot together. At the ball, they will choose the most beautiful people, and I have no doubt that it will be me and Vincent. So, the long-awaited evening arrived. Our school hall was beautifully decorated, and there was loud music playing. There were a lot of people crowded around, all dressed up, and it was hard to tell who was who. But I noticed Vincent at once. He was tall, dressed in dark clothes, with a beautiful black mask over his eyes and false vampire fangs. He was very handsome. After I adjusted my mask, I ran up to him and did a little curtsy. Ha! Huh. I'm a princess. The guy froze for a minute. And then, you'll know what happened in a minute. But now don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And make sure you have the bell clicked. Then you'll know when there's a new video coming out on the channel. So, the guy froze for a minute and then gave me his hand. Ah. Oh, my heart dropped. I wanted this so badly. Vincent and I walked out onto the dance floor and sailed into a slow dance. Vincent gently put his arm around my waist, pulling me to him. Everything was so unreal. Only the hand he held my arm in was very cold. 
almost icy. And suddenly, he smiled at me in a way that made me think those vampire fangs were real. Okay, stop, Bella. I'm just having a fantasy. A photo shoot. There were a lot of people in this year's photo shoot. Guys and girls rushed to be photographed together. All wanting to be the prettiest couple at the ball. Of course, I pulled Vincent too. He stood beside me, hugged me with both arms, and I leaned my head coquettishly on his shoulder. We looked very spectacular. He leaned toward me, and suddenly I felt his teeth on my neck, cold and sharp. It was like a light prick to the neck, and I cried out a little. But the sounds of the crowd drowned me out. No one understood a thing. I jerked away from the guy, and he suddenly <laughs> laughed loudly, spun around, and disappeared into the ground. I got so mad. I started shouting loudly, Vincent, where are you going? Come back here. What are you shouting for? What do you need me for? I was standing behind me, and the voice was painfully familiar. Vincent's. He was standing there dressed as, no, not a vampire, but a superhero, and he was staring at me in bewilderment. You were a vampire just now. I whispered, but I knew myself that that was impossible, and I'd just been hugged by anyone but Vincent. I didn't feel like celebrating anymore. I drove home. My neck was a little sore. I couldn't sleep that night without painkillers. The next day, other strange things began to happen. In the morning, it felt like the sun was burning my skin. I closed the curtains tightly and slept all day. At night, I woke up, alert and full of energy. But what to do? I lay awake until morning, determined to go to school. But the sun, as soon as it came up, I felt sick. I closed the curtains and crammed myself into a dark corner. And I've been sitting like that for a week now. I tell my mom and dad that I'm sick. I can't stand the light of day. My neck finally stopped hurting. But I'm not happy about it. I don't know what's wrong with me. And who was in the vampire costume at the ball? Maybe I'm sick of something. What would you do if you were me? Any thoughts? Write in the comments. I really need your support. I'm Tracy from Texas, and I want to share something with you. I'm 15 now. I'm in high school. I have the highest grades in all subjects, and it makes everyone envious. Although I don't consider myself a nerd, my classmates avoid me. At the beginning of the school year, a newcomer came to us. I'm Marco. He introduced himself loudly, and it was clear to everyone that he's a tough guy and better not mess with him. He was very cocky and wasn't afraid to bully other guys. He got into fights and brawls all the time until he became a leader, proving to everyone that he was the strongest. The girls were afraid of him. He could stake out his foot at the most unexpected moment, or during a break hide someone's backpack in someone else's locker or pour glue on someone's chair. Marco always had the meanest thoughts in his head. And everyone was afraid to complain about him since he turned out to be the principal's nephew. Marco had as much fun as he could. He was picking out one victim after another and kept bullying them. And now it was my turn. One morning, he stood in my way as I entered the classroom and right in front of my face, he gritted his teeth loudly. He probably thought I was going to squeal, but I ignored him. It made Mark angry. All day long, he's been doing mean things to me. He stole my notebook from my desk and put chalk on my chair, but I didn't react. It was hard, because I wanted to throw myself at Marco and scratch his face. It was really annoying. 
but remembering how happy he got when others were freaking out about his antics, I decided to play it cool. The next day, the same thing happened again. Marco was following me around, repeating my every movement. Everyone watched in amazement how I ignored all his antics. No one thought that Miss Goodgrades, that was my nickname, would be able to endure all the bullying from his side with such dignity. After another day, I realized that Marco was desperate. He didn't know what kind of trick to pull on me anymore. After school, he suddenly ran up to me, grabbed my backpack, and started kicking it around the schoolyard. He laughed and grinned and kept looking at me. When am I going to finally react? But I stood there and looked at him silently, not expressing any emotion. When he had enough, he spat on my backpack and left. I shook off my bag and walked in the opposite direction, home. But then, something happened that I never expected. Before I continue, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And make sure you click on the bell so you'll know when there's a new video coming out. I heard the sound of footsteps behind me. Why are you behaving like that? It was Marco. Why aren't you responding to me? Wow, he's going to cry. I looked at him and thought, and I answered calmly. I'm waiting for you to get over it. And then he stared right into my eyes and blushed. I didn't take my eyes off of him, and my heart raced. You're the first one who's ever acted like that, and I like you, Tracy. Suddenly, Marco was different. He smiled warmly at me, and I realized that his behavior was just a defensive reaction. We hung out with him until late in the evening. Marco told me that he was afraid to get close to people, that he didn't trust them. It turned out that when he was a kid, his mom and dad divorced. Mom had decided to pursue her career, dad started a new family, and Marco had been sent to his grandmother's house. He kept waiting for his parents to come to their senses and come back for him, so everything would be the same as before. But that didn't happen, and Marco got angry at people, stopped trusting them. That's why he became a bully to everyone. It's better for everyone to be afraid of me, then no one can hurt me. Those words made my heart ache, and I hugged Marco. I felt sorry for him. Marco put his nose on my neck and hugged me back. And that was the beginning of our relationship. Yes, yes, the bully and the good girl are now dating, and everyone at school is shocked. But Marco doesn't bother anyone. On the contrary, he tries to establish relations with everyone, and I'm very happy about it. What do you think of my story? Do you think Mark and I have a future together? Please write me your thoughts.